Hello, everyone. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm David Goodall, and over there is John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Hey, I can talk. Yeah. Um, Took a few days, but a lot of hard work and tea and honey and Gatorade and just clearing my system was pain. Uh. Noby. <laughs> uh. Everybody shoots it at a garbage can, goes Kobe. When I miss, I go Noby. <laughs> so I missed. <laughs> well, there you go. You guys witnessed it out of, out of show. <laughs> Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 202, West Heart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 448007585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. This Admirals team has been streaking. Yeah. I mean, streaking, not that kind of streaking. Um, as much as the girls would love that. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, they've been, they've been, this team's different. Yeah. How we started. So, and, and I know it's a long season, anything can change. So, but this team's gelled and clicked. All righty. Um. We haven't played San Diego in a while. Uh, right. I think 2019, 2020, the last time we played them. And we were about to play them at home for the first time. I think it was like a week after everything shut down. It was mm -hmm. on the schedule for us to play that, them to come here for the first time. Yeah. There have been times where we'll travel there, but they never came back. Right. They were going to come here. I think they're coming here this year. Yeah, they are. So it's going to be really cool to see, like, the Gulls, because I haven't seen them in a while. Right. Um, a, little, a little history here, but the San Diego Gulls used to be in the IHL back in the day, which is what is behind John over there, on, uh, right next to the race car photo. Uh, it's our old IHL uh, jersey. And yeah. John actually looks over there. There's a San Diego hockey team on it. So, and the Gulls were out there. There's also Vegas. Uh, it was the uh, Vegas. I want to call them the Wranglers, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, all I know is the best hockey logo for the eye was us and the Detroit Vipers. <laughs> logo was cool. Yeah. He's looking now. Yeah. Las Vegas Thunder. Okay. They they always had they, they had a few name changes in their time. Yeah. Um, but this Admirals game was a very late one. We me and John had a post game meeting at eleven thirty last night. Right. Um central time. So we were exhausted. I didn't wake up till ten o'clock today. Neither did I. <laughs> yeah, last night was a late one. We're pretty much ripped and ready for another late one tonight. On the basis of a double, um, the Preds take on... Who are they playing? <laughs> That's a really Vancouver. Vancouver, okay. Um, also, breaking news in the NHL, the Ottawa Senators are starting the process to sell the team. Yep. The condition of the sale would remain that the team remains in the Providence of, or in the, the city of Ottawa. Um, Eugene Melnick last last season had passed away. Um, his daughters, 
um, Anna and Olivia had overtaken the team and financially um, um, the team had filed for bankruptcy in 2000, uh, 2003. So that was just, that just, just broke. Okay. Like, so um, the the condition is they will, the Ottawa Senators aren't going anywhere. So um, good news there. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, John, you want to start us off here? Sure. Um, yesterday's game, Friday, November 4th, the Admirals took on the goals. Shots on goal in the first period, Milwaukee outshot the goals 18 to 5. In the second period, Milwaukee outshot them 9 to 7. And in the third, they outshot them 11 to 8 for a total shot count of 38 to 20. Out shooting the goals was Milwaukee. Um, penalty minutes, Milwaukee went 0 for 4 on the power play with two minutes and one infraction while San Diego went 0 for 1 with 11 minutes, four infractions. Alrighty. Um, one of the big ones was that uh, Dimitri Osipov five minute boarding call. Yeah. Um, uh, many of you Admirals fans will remember Dimitri Osipov as a longtime member of the Rockford Ice Hogs. Yep. Alright, so... Uh, John, I'll take scoring in this one because there ain't much. <laughs> right. <laughs> All righty. Um, uh, so first period, uh, Mark Delgazzo with a hammer from the point uh, with his second of the season with an assist from Kiefer Sherwood, his first, and Roland McEwen, his third. Um, Delgazzo's impressed a lot this season, just making all the right plays. Right. Everyone's making all the right plays on this team right now. Yep. Like I said, they're just playing phenomenal hockey. Um, the Admirals also held them to 20 shots, which they they weren't allowing them to do a whole lot. No, they weren't. Um, then scoring in the second, nothing. Scoring in the third, Marcus Nermy, he uh blocked a clearing into uh blocked a shot. Uh the guy went and Pinched the boards, missed Nermi, which I don't know how you miss Nermi. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude's like huge. Um, and Nermi just took the puck and went, Well, you forgot me and you forgot the puck. <laughs> and right. went scored out a breakaway. Um really simple. Right, Nermi's six five. Yeah. <laughs> like if, if if you can't see that or hit that. <laughs> You're in the wrong league. <laughs> right. Um, And then about three minutes later, Cole Schneider scores on one of the best passing plays I'd ever seen. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. I mean, this team is clicking. And, 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 and when you get a team that's clicking this early, there's, there is a chance for down. <clears throat> right. But generally it's a good thing. But generally, it's a good thing because it, they can, if you can get the confidence and sustain it, I mean, which it looks like what they're doing, and, and uh, Askarov is just... Um, then at the 1743 mark, Pavel uh, Pavel Regenda, Redunda, that was redundant, <laughs> uh, scored his second with an assist from Austin Strand. Uh, your three stars of the game were Pravel, Raganda, and uh, was your third star. And Lucas Dostal uh, was the first star, stopping 35 of 38. Uh, second star of the game was Yaroslav Askarov. This is where I get to talk about the goalies because they were the stars. Yep. I mean, besides us peppering the net, but I mean, puck time up uh, of. Attack. Time on attack. Time on attack. The Admiral dominated on in time on attack. Yeah. 
go. Let's see here. It's not that one. It's whoops, that. You know, and, and here's here's the real part. We made Rocco Grimaldi a minus three. Right. Um, we basically put him and Justin Kirkland on it, uh, uh, you know, we, we shut them down and, and here's the thing. We know how they play. We know their right. abilities. We know their strengths. We know their weaknesses. When Grimaldi tried to pull some of the stuff he did when he was here, guys like Novak and, and, were, and Parson and, 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 and Evangelista were ready, and they weren't, and Evangelista and Parson and weren't here all that long with Marco. Right. So they took time to practice and make sure, hey, when he does this, you do this, and, you know? Right. You know, they definitely took the time for their practicing and 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 making sure that they were squared away and you know, um, I, this is just a different season for the Admirals, and <laughs> it's night and day of how Mark Del Geizo was last year compared to this year. Right. I think he's got more confidence in the fact that his D partner is a little more competent. Right. I'm not saying Tennyson's not competent, but there's guys who mesh, and then there's guys who don't. And those two just don't, their play styles, they don't work together well. Right. And and that can be a problem. And, and right. I think that was the problem last year is we had so much injection of youth that the old guys couldn't keep up. And now we have an injection of veteranship with youth and speed and size. And oh. I was watching the four checking yesterday. It was just like, yeah! <laughs> uh -huh. Don't get him! <laughs> You know, uh, when a guy came up to the blue line, they were they were pinching right at the blue line. They were standing up at the blue line. They were making sure they made their they finished their checks. Right. They're doing they're checking all the correct the right boxes. Right. You know, they did get caught in their zone on that on that goal by San Diego, and that had happened a couple times, but they sustained it. Right. They they, they just bared down and played defense. So when they're stuck in their own zone, they can just bear down and play defense. <clears throat> you know, and, and that's that's the thing. The other thing is the difference of when Tomasino got here and the first two, two, three games he played to now is different. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing. The coaching in Milwaukee is doing an amazing job. And here's the thing. If Nashville is going to have to rebuild, if the right coach is sitting in Milwaukee, because it looks like he can take the young talent and make the best of them, and then also <laughs> take the veteran talent and go, yeah, I know you guys know what to do, so just go do it. Right. You know, and that's that's it's 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 nuts because Carl Taylor's undefeated in the NHL as a head coach. So it, it doesn't surprise me that yes, I can say that, even though he was an interim coach because the other coach, our coach had COVID. So <laughs> <laughs> But we came, he came up there with him and, and and Ford, I think, was up there too. And and they just played his style. They already knew his style and they played it. And they won. Right. And he even said, I said, I didn't do too much to change things. I just changed a couple little things that I saw that could help them in the long run. And and I, I think that sometimes maybe that's what Nashville needs is a guy like Carl Taylor to take a look and go, okay, this is, you know, 
Right. Sometimes your minor league coach has a little more insight or, a li- hey, I saw this. Maybe we want to try this instead right. of doing this. You know, it's just the little things. And 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 he check marks the little things every time. He said, right. win the little battles. And they add up to winning the big fight. Right. So, because if you win the little battles, the individual battles, and then you're unselfish on the other side. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, like, that's what I'm seeing from this team. Everyone's willing to, to you know, block shots. Everyone's willing to, you know, play the game. Um, I don't know why Jimmy Huntington did not play. I don't know. I'm not sure if he was hurt. I know that he got hurt in Rockford, but I'm not sure. Because he started in Rockford, but didn't play. Uh, right. The third period. So we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, hockey is a very physical sport. So, um, the attendance at the Pachanga Arena in San Diego was six thousand nine hundred and ninety-two. Not bad. No. So oh, pretty good, pretty good one. All righty. So we're right back at it against the same team tonight. Um, top scorers for the Admirals are Luca Evangelista, Phil Tomasino, uh, or Luca Luca Evangelista with two goals, six assists, eight points. Phil Tomasino, five goals, two assists, seven points. John Lennard, seven assists. Marcus Nervi, two goals, five assists. Yusuf Harson had one goal, six assists, seven points. That means that we have one, two, three, four guys with seven points. Uh, yeah. Nicholas, uh, Brola, Broladier, Brola, Brola, I don't even know how to say his name. Nicholas Brulier. Uh, He has three goals, seven assists. Rocco Grimaldi has three goals, six assists. Danny O'Regan has nine assists. Uh, the uh, Olive, Olivier Gru, uh, Giroux has two goals, four assists. And Brendan Tracy has three goals, three assists. The Admirals... Um, are now on a five-game winning streak. Uh, the Admirals have not scored less than two goals all season. Yeah. Um, San Diego is uh, three and two in their last five. And currently riding a two-game losing streak. I believe it'll be the uh, Cooley in net today. Uh, on the basis of a back-to-back plus travel, they're going to want to make sure that Askarov is ready to go for Wednesday's game. As it looks like Askarov is the starter. Yeah, that certainly does look like what has happened. Um, and And... and I guess I could be honest here. It it doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me either. We we've been saying it the entire time that we've been talking about Askarov about how he is a, a very talented goalie, and we didn't understand why they weren't playing him overseas. From everything that we've seen now, there are some things that he does have to work on on the American side. But over there, he would he would have been a if. if the, how do I put it? If the KHL was the NHL, he'd have won a Vesna. Right. So, I mean, and, and maybe not now, but I mean, in his career, he's going to win one. I, I firmly believe it. And you can come back to this video 10 years <laughs> from now when he does. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, just wanted to Kind of say that you know this is this has been nice. Um, I I know that it's been um very difficult um for for us lately. Uh, 
folks, we're sorry. Uh, we've been having um, health issues on our end. Um, I've been sick. My wife's been sick. My kids have been sick. John's wife was sick or is sick. Um, and John and me have been, I had no voice. So um, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.